Okay, now let's comment on the uh, PHP articles posted on the PHP classes blog on December, since this was a month with vacation, not many articles were posted, but we are going to cover like four. And I have some feedback. Okay, so we are going to start precisely uh, by the first one, which is on PHP performance comparison evolution. We already so talked about this. Suggestion: one. Let's start on sharing the screen. Uh, that that is also a, a good idea. In general. Just in general. <laughs> and I just need to find the right tab to share. Uh, okay, it's appearing now. So, as I was saying, this was already commented on the PHP classes, uh, on the PHP innovation, uh, late PHP uh, podcast, but we covered it here again because it was one of the articles of the month. This article was by Christian Vig, and then the, the purpose was to show an extensive uh, list of PHP versions, starting PHP 5, and throughout PHP 7.1, and including one experimental branch uh, that uh, is using a JIT engine to optimize the execution of PHP code by converting it into native machine code. Uh, this article was uh, elaborated by Christian Big that uh, compiled all these PHP versions that you can see here on the screen, and he measured uh, the time that it took to run uh, several types of benchmark scripts. In some cases, he had to run those benchmark scripts many times uh, in a loop, so it did not give inaccurate results. As you may see here on the, 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 the columns uh, that show re the relative gain, the, the percentage number, and this is between the the the, ver the version here and the previous version. So performance like uh, increased 27 times between PHP 5.0 and <coughs> PHP 7.1, which is a lot. And PHP 7, uh, I mean PHP Next, PHP 8, or PHP 7.2. Uh, that will include the JIT engine will still be 50% faster, but uh, uh, for pure CPU tasks. Uh, this article will be updated by Christian uh, eventually soon with uh, also benchmark results for um, uh, code of uh, reward application. In the case, it will be WordPress. Uh, the gains won't be as significant, but uh, they'll still show that PHP became much faster over time. And uh, this is very interesting, uh, very complete, the article, because it shows the lists of uh, performance related improvements on uh, each version. Uh, there are some details about how we uh, achieve these results, what configuration he used. And uh, finally, in the end, there is a section thanking uh, the developers uh, of PHP Core that contributed to all these performance improvements over time, in special Dimitris Togal and his team that uh, always contributed a lot to 
PHP performance improvements, but especially in PHP 7, uh, Chin Chin, we and Nikita Popov uh, also collaborated with these improvements. Uh, in the past, we all know that uh, at least starting PHP 4, the performance of PHP was improved a lot. That was when it um, started using the uh, Zen engine, which is uh, an engine that compiles PHP source code into uh, opcodes. But those were the times where more the Zen founders, Andy Goodmans, Steve Suraskan, and also Stas Malishev have participated in the performance improvements that happened then. But this article only covers from PHP 5 on. It doesn't cover before because uh, there should be practically nobody using those older versions. And also, in the end, there is also a, a, a tribute video to the 21 years of PHP development created by Peter Cockart, who is, a, is a, a, the founder and moderator of the PHP group on Facebook. Uh, and there is a nice video here that you, you that is very loud. <laughs> And, and but it's quite nice because it shows how, how the, the 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 branches of the and the modules of the PHP code evolve over the years. I don't know if I'll be able to see this in top resolution. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's quite nice, it has four minutes, so if you like the, the, what you see, you should take a look at, at this article. And, uh, oh, there is also a reference to the PHP Diversity Rainbow Elephant campaign. That was a crowdfunding campaign that already ended, but since this was before, this published before the campaign ended, there was an appeal to uh, participate in this campaign that was very close to not reaching its goal, but uh, well, thanks to the PHP community that gathered uh, around the, this initiative, the, uh, the, it reached the goal. So, I ordered my own diversity elephant. What about you, Arthur? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, I missed that campaign. When I was reading the article, it was already closed. Uh, so you are not going to get a colorful... Uh, Unfortunately outfit. not. No, not part of this campaign. I think you can buy it separately. Probably. Yeah. Well, anyway, I uh, uh, placed... Uh, um, uh, when you support... Uh, it's a pledge, right? Um, for for this campaign and hopefully when the elephants are ready I'll be getting a small one and a big one <laughs> as if I don't have enough elephants over here right, right. <laughs> okay uh, this article gives a lot of details but basically that's it that uh, was the most important stay tuned for the update that will include the uh, performance uh, results regarding um, running PHP with WordPress. So the next article that you're going to comment is is uh, developing for PHP scalability using web application performance testing of load. This uh, article was written by Dave Smith, and it uh, covers some. Uh, basics of uh, performing scalable uh, applications some uses some tools and this explains some terms so let's go through it so the first term is bottleneck which literally describes the bottle and its neck as the tightest spot so if you uh, like flip it over the water will run 
<laughs> slower because the 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 bottleneck is more smaller uh, than uh, the bottle itself than if you cut it through into sides for example yeah so it's it symbolically represents the part of your application that works works the so it is the slowest one so you would need to analyze it and to check to see what your uh, what execution time of your court parts profiling and stuff like that to understand your bottlenecks uh, next is a scaling there is a vertical scaling and a horizontal scaling uh, so vertical scaling is more when um, one server or one unit something and you increase resources for this unit like more memory more processor for the server faster processor and, and stuff like that and horizontal scaling is when you add more units and they run in parallel and or and or uh, in a balanced way so the more units to handle all your needs you expand to more servers and and and, and, and replica sets and shards and stuff like that um, and so, uh, how the author Dave explains uh, it that uh, you need to have a development environment where you test and you test everything that you can there, even instantaneous peaks and all the uh, scenarios that you can predict, or uh, as he explains, I guess that could happen before moving to production. And uh, he even uh, shares the tools that he, he uses. So, for example, if you have a website, probably you will have users that would be accessing it and emulating uh, lots of users instead of any speak is hard because uh, what you would probably emulate is simple request to the server, but users do actually more. They have some kind of behavior. And these tools that he shares allows you to record what your user does and replicates it on a larger scale with more connections. Uh, so yes, what he calls this um, WAPT tool from Softlogica and load agents that, that would uh, manage your virtual users and their interactions. Um, so it's a nice article if you want to uh, really test your, to understand how you can test and pre uh, prepare your website or your web app for uh, high load uh, to test the performance and improve it and make it more scalable. Uh, I think most of this part would even apply if you're not using PHP, but uh, any other uh, environment you you have. Yeah, that, that's true. This, this is a, a, actually a sponsored uh, article from uh, a company that provides the WAP tool, uh, yeah. which is uh, useful to determine uh, in practice how, how, how ready is your uh, environment to handle the load of many simultaneous users. So. There is, I think, a limit for the free version. But once uh, you use the, uh, the premium version, you can, I think, test to up to 10,000 simultaneous users, which is a lot, I think. Yeah. Uh, at least uh, for one server, but I'm not sure if this is for just one server or for cluster services. Okay, so I also would like to comment on another article. If the Hangouts let me share the screen, which is an article on uh, how to create a, a PHP secure login and registration system in 2016 and already 2017 because things did not change much. but. Uh, the idea is to show here uh, uh, this article of Ashraf case is about an, an actual package that implements uh, a common functionality that many applications need, which is to have a system register users that are stored in a database. And it, uh, in the case, it uses PDO to store the, 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 the user records. So you can switch databases more easier? Uh, well, nowadays the purpose 
uh, is in term, when you think about security is more of uh, using prepared statements rather than just concatenating strings and the risks of having SQL injections. So the article uh, talks uh, about this, what uh, is a, a system for login and registration that can be considered secure. So what is uh, mentioned here is the, there are several of features that it provides, like using PDO to avoid SQL injections. And uh, it also uses uh, the, the, a strong password hashing um, function of, of PHP uh, to minimize the chances of actually uh, have your passwords guessed if for some reason somebody leaks the, the database. And uh, it also has a feature that uh, limits the number of attempts that the user may fail a password. So uh, it avoids that somebody is trying to guess the password by uh, doing some brute force attacks. So these are basic things that all systems should have, but it was interesting that uh, um, it is uh, described in a simple manner in an article um, uh, with uh, all the features that you usually need in on a, a registration system. Uh, this is just uh, this allows just uh, you to log in with uh, your uh, email and password, but you could eventually make it more complete and integrate uh, with the login system based on OAuth uh, that would allow you what is called a social login using Facebook, Google, Yahoo and uh, accounts of many other providers. So the, the, the tutorial is quite simple, it just teaches you how to uh, create login and registration pages it uses uh, Ajax for form submission and uh, it performs all the security checks by filtering some variables that are not supposed to be, uh, are not supposed to have certain, certain values. And uh, there is also the activation process, which consists in uh, activating an, an uh, uh, an account by sending a, a code by email and uh, finally there is also support to perform the logout process uh, a logout uh, uh, process uh, for logged users of course so this article is pretty complete it is nothing that you should not know but uh, unfortunately many users are not familiar all the steps that they should be concerned so it was quite uh, quite uh, quite interesting and complete this article from uh, Ashraf Gade uh, from uh, Bosnia okay uh, so there is one more article right yes let me comment on <coughs> HP RTF parser to process word processing documents, part one. Uh, I think, yeah, we already commented on similar package uh, and it's by Christian V from France. And so RTF document is a rich text format document uh, provided by Microsoft. Uh, I think the program using it was called WordPad, yes. I, even I, I think, in when I first my, got my computer, uh, actually saw something like that. So, not that old, <laughs> or maybe I'm already old, I don't know. Um, and basically, this article is about how to parse these kind of documents, what are these con its contents, and how to interpret them. Um, so here is an example in the WordPad, yeah, and I actually don't remember uh, it much. I make special characters, nice, and underneath it looks something like this. 
So basically, I think it was one of the first formats that would allow you some text formatting, colors, mm -hmm. fonts. Well, actually, <clears throat> that was more like <laughs> uh, something that was the precursor of HTML, <laughs> because it all, it's all based on text. But it was mostly meant for interchange, like uh, um, interchanging uh, documents between uh, Windows and Mac users. Uh, so, uh, but it is this is pretty old, and uh, but the author uh, explains that he developed that parser to perform uh, to implement a solution. That has nothing to do because nowadays nobody uses RTF for saving documents. Although it is possible, uh, it, it, it explains that um, uh, it will, since it was in text, when we export RTF, you can have a, a parser and um, somehow reformat the text to see to clearly see the difference between two documents and. No. Uh, because by then you use a text difference um, tool to, to compare the documents. Yeah, but yeah, but article is mostly uh, about the RTF, this, the syntax that it has. So if you are gonna understand RTF more, you should check it out. So there are control words, and you can see them, and yeah. uh, that everything is surrounded around these curly brackets, and all the document is, and then it's grouped into smaller groups. Like here, and there are control symbols and how you escape expressions. Uh, basically, I think the whole RTF standard is explained more yeah. or less. In this yes, because this is the first part of the series. I don't know if Christian already has the other parts ready, but we'll wait and see. So that one, I was just to explain the format. Yeah, specifically to tell all this is the something very similar to HTML, but uh, it's not HTML. <laughs> okay, well, with this uh, we end the PHP articles uh, report of um, that relates to December articles. There are not many articles uh, in December because it was. A month on when many people were celebrating uh, holidays, uh, uh, Christmas and uh, New Year. So, but next month, actually, the current month, uh, there are many more articles being planned to be published. So, uh, I guess that's all on my behalf. That is all for now. See you.